Romeo, welcome. Take yeah. it away. Nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet you. So for the Top Asian Masterclass, my name is Romeo. Uh, let's start. So, Romeo, so how long have you been with the team? Oh, yeah, exactly. So I've been with the team since early 2023, last year. So it's been a little bit over a year. And I've been having my license since August 2020. Uh, but when I joined the team, that's when I started to do a lot more um, for reasons like uh, Bill's mentorship, uh, Daisy as well. Uh, basically being around the team, I think that helped out a lot. Uh, basically converting because I came across leads before this team, but I didn't convert them as much as right now when I'm with the team, since I've been with the team. So yeah, the team helps out a lot. All right. So how to succeed at an open house presented by me. So what is an open house? The way I like to think about an open house is it's an audition for you to win over potential clients. It's an opportunity for you to show that you're a knowledgeable professional who can come up with quick solutions and is quick on their, his or her feet. Um, you basically know what you're doing. You have like, um, you're quick to take action, basically. So basically you're the professional, you're there to offer solutions and there's people coming in and you are gonna see them for 10, 20 minutes and you're there to show them your value at, within those 10 to 20 minutes. So we're gonna cover what happens, what you should do before, during, and after, and a couple things that you should say. So basically what I do to get open houses, I pull up the MLS or Zillow, and I'll call the listing agents. And one thing I like to do is I like to focus on my neighborhood. So that's uh, Oakland, for example, East Oakland. So homes under six, 700,000, because that's where I know that I'll have better conversations with the leads coming in. Um, I could focus on San Jose, uh, Vallejo, uh, San Francisco, but I'd, I'd be all over the place and I generally don't know those areas. So that's why I like to focus in Oakland uh, because then uh, I tend to see that if they're looking at open houses in this area, it's because they're looking for homes around this area. So that's one way where I like to focus my, um, my niche and um, uh, service area. So you have a niche that you really do yeah. drive your focus to. Exactly, so like homes under seven, 800 around the Oakland area. And that tends to get me a lot of Latino and black um, buyers. Uh, which is exactly the people that I tend to connect with the best. Um, I've done open houses, San Jose, but I don't make the best connections there. And so it's a little bit, um, it, and it's a farther drive. It, there's a lot more complications. Um, so I've seen that in Oakland, my area where I'm the neighborhood expert because I grew up there. That's where I get my better conversations and uh, where I convert best. So that's why I, like focusing that way, I think it's uh, very helpful. So you're very intentional with your open houses. You don't just select any, which I never thought about it that way. So that's really good to know. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna see that when you go to an open house, the people are generally looking around that area. Uh, so it's good to know that area. That's why it's good to know to be in your area. So you know how to answer all their questions about where are the schools, Where's the traffic? Where's the jobs? Uh, how much is the commute? You're gonna be the expert just because you grew up there, basically. And then it's exactly like lead gen calling for open houses. You're gonna get a lot of no's, but you gotta sell yourself. I like to say, hey, I'm gonna, I, I can host uh, a Thursday, Friday, a Saturday and Sunday open house for you. And I also door knock. You're basically pretty much doing um, the listing agent's job and they're gonna 100% say yes, more than likely. Um, and the better you talk, the better you're gonna uh, get at getting open houses, uh, exactly like lead genning for uh, buyers and sellers. And I pretty much say something really simple like, hello, Bill. Hey, Bill. <laughs> hey, Bill, this is Romeo. Do you have a couple minutes to talk about your B Street listing? I was asking because I was curious to see if you needed help in hosting open houses. 
I can do it Thursday and Saturday and Sunday. I also door knock before my open houses. And that way I get a lot of eyes on your listing. Um, and, and they're gonna really appreciate that, that you're doing two, three days of open houses and door knocking. So then they're gonna be more than likely to call you for the next weekend's open house or the next listing that they have. Um, I have a mentor from Keller Williams. She always asks me to host her open houses there in the Oakland area because I, yeah, I always give her good feedback. And then I do it like two, three times uh, on the weekend. And they really appreciate that. And you're basically doing their job, so they're gonna say yes. That's a good script. Uh, so that script that you used, yeah. has anyone else used that script before? No, that's picture. Oh, uh, we'll share the slides as well. Okay. Yeah, and, and it's not even, and it's not too complicated. It, there's not much to it. <laughs> That's my wingman. And uh, before the open house, uh, I think this is the, the biggest part, preparing yourself. Because um, the open house is pretty much just talking to people, answering questions. And there's about five, six parts to it. I make flyers and uh, just a bunch of preparation. So first it starts off with scheduling. You got to make sure Google Calendar is your best friend because you're going to have the open house from 1 to 4 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, maybe, maybe also a Thursday or Friday. And so you got to plan for your showings before and after. Maybe you have some other commitments. Uh, you just got to plan ahead. You don't want to be that agent where they're just setting up signs uh, five minutes before the open house and there's people waiting at the door. Um, and maybe you also have showings as well. That's why it's also important that you have an open house that's like in your city because you don't have to drive all the way over there and then you got to go for showings in Vallejo, San Francisco. Uh, that's why I like keeping it like kind of centralized. Uh, it's easier to plan around. And next, you got to review the listing details with the listing agent. You ask them like uh, things, uh, offer date, uh, any upgrades, disclosures any inspections, um, what the seller is expecting to receive. Uh, and once you have all that information, uh, that's pretty much the answers to 90% of the questions that the attendees are gonna ask. So you're prepared for that. And for supplies, I like to get flyers like this one from Blanca and they'll make it like in five minutes. Um, so that's not a problem. And I also like to get flyers from the listing agent. So I already have two uh, flyers and I could customize it. Um, you could customize it, whatever, however you want to. And I have a quick sign-in sheet. It's not too complicated. I made it in Google Docs in like 20 minutes. It's just name, phone, email, uh, my logo and the EXP logo. And yeah, it doesn't have to be too complicated. That's all you need pretty much, name, phone and email. Um, and then you could also plan ahead for signs. Uh, everyone's fighting over signs at the moment. So you gotta plan ahead early in the week to get them. Um, yeah, you gotta plan ahead because they might be in Hercules or uh, what the Walnut Creek office, you might need a lot more. And you also have to have some little things like snacks, drinks, nothing too complicated. Signs are oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, snacks and drinks, um, nothing too complicated. Maybe just water, a bag of mixed chips, nothing. You could go crazier for uh, like a bigger open house, but it doesn't have to be too much. Um, a lot of these things, I made it quick and simple so that you could do it over and over again. And then you can add your touches later. And next, I think this is one of the most important things, uh, making a CMA and knowing the neighborhood listings around the area. So for a CMA, um, I think it's important to know what the home will sell for because people are coming to the open house based on like the Zillow price, but you as the neighborhood agent, neighborhood expert, you're going to know that this home is actually going to sell for uh, 600, but it's listed for 500 and they're going to appreciate that. They're going to know, they're going to come to you as the expert, you know what it's going to actually sell for. And also for knowing the neighborhood listings, uh, let's say 10, 20 people come into the open house, maybe one of them wins the house, but there's the other nine, 19 uh, attendees that are gonna be looking for more homes and uh, you know what's around the area and you could, they're generally gonna be looking around the area. So you could let them know that, hey, uh, after my open house is done, we could take a look at these homes 
that also fit your criteria and you get that face-to-face -face, uh, connection again with uh, buyers as well. Plus also if sellers come in, you're gonna know. Um, Let's touch on that a little bit more. So did you guys hear that? Yeah. Like, he has that CMA, not just for, not just to have it there, but that script that you used was, we can also take a look at homes in that price range right after my open house. How many people do you normally get when you do that? Um, so on Saturday and Sunday, that's when people are not working. So they're more likely to say yes. I've, have, I've had a lot of people come in uh, and we took a look at houses after the open house. I don't know exactly how many, but there's been a lot, plenty. Um, and then afterwards, it depends if they could actually qualify or if they're already qualified. Um, but at least you get that other face-to-face -face connection where, because the other question that you're gonna get a lot, a lot, a lot is, do you have other listings in the neighborhood? And that's not necessarily like, are you actually listing these houses? It's more so, do you have more houses for me to see, for you to show me? That's what I get from them. Uh, and that's why you doing all this preparation in advance, you're gonna be like, okay, we have this home that we could see that fits your criteria. Uh, that's why that's really important. And it also shows you're quick on your feet. Uh, yeah, if they mention, I have these criteria, and then you remember, okay, I have this home that I looked up, uh, that fits your criteria you make that connection you set up that showing maybe that day of um, and they'll show up 99 uh, percent of the time um, yeah and number five uh, practicing the script uh, so you basically got to attend tuesday and thursday uh, zoom meetings um, and yeah that's where you learn the best um, also shattering sure agent exactly exactly uh, shattering the Agents that are hosting open houses is also really good as well. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get it. <clears throat> the better you're going to get at it. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing from beginning to end. Just different house, different city, uh, maybe different story for the seller. But it's generally the same thing. So you're going to get better at it the more you do it. And then six, this is something I don't do it pretty much at all. Is you got to post on socials, and it doesn't have to be too complicated. From what I've seen from other agents posting. It's just them walking the property, pointing out the details. Uh, it's pretty much just uh, record, basically. Um, doesn't have to be too complicated. Yeah, and this is the Especially most. Especially on social, you would want to post, hey, maybe that night before. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm going to have be at an open house this time. Um, don't give all the details, but at least post some of the details where it's like enticing, where, oh, I want to go take a look at that. Um, I honestly, I'll tag people and be like, hey, you know, Share it because that's how you're gonna get the most exposure. Yeah, and you put not not on Zillow. Yeah. The, the other thing that you guys can do too is make a Facebook event. So make a Facebook like event, and then like that basically starts. It allows you to invite people. Like you can invite groups, right? You can invite like I think up to two thousand of your friends, right? So like every weekend, if you guys are doing open houses every single weekend, you're inviting two thousand of your friends by a click of a button. Yeah, it is, yeah, you could tag like hundreds of people just by certain, uh, yeah, uh, there's other people that know more than me, but yeah, that helps out a lot as well. Next, so uh, you could door knock during the, during, before the open house or the days before. Um, and I think door knocking is important because you're just, I, I, I think when you have an open house, that's the easiest uh, version of door knocking because you're just saying, hey, come check out our uh, open house. It's not too complicated. It's more of a, it's a warmer conversation uh, than just door knocking a neighborhood where you're asking, hey, are you selling? Uh, you could just say you're invited to our open house on Saturday, 1 to 4 p.m., quick and easy, and you just hand them a flyer. Um, and then you could say something like, make sure to invite your family and friends. Uh, they might have family, friends that are interested in buying in that area. You could also mention something like, uh, there's this house that's up for sale, and you could uh, take this opportunity to pick your neighbors, stuff like that. Just be creative. Um, and you could also mention, we're already getting a lot of interested buyers for our listing and in this neighborhood. And then from that, you could get to the point of asking, since we have all these buyers, you may want to sell, you may want to know um, what your property could sell for in the future. 
And yeah, that's how that conversation starts out in a much more natural way versus the, what people do for door knocking generally, which is just pick a neighborhood and ask people if they're selling versus this one you're inviting, initially inviting them to the open house. And then it's also good for, um, for sellers because uh, you have an opportunity to talk to them, get to know them. And then at the open house, they see you selling the house. And that's the most important part. They're going to see you posting the signs, door knocking, also hosting the open houses. So you're basically adding to the, uh, you're auditioning. They're going to see it. So that's why they're going to be more willing to work with you from what I've seen. And also, uh, I make it a point to at least door knock that one street that the house is on because uh, I've done a lot of open houses where the house two, three, four doors down or across went up for sale. And yeah, uh, you're not going to like that uh, because you were literally there. Um, so I make it a point to at least talk to a majority of the uh, owners in that same street. Um, yeah, it's more than likely there's going to be another house up for sale. Yeah, so you don't have to door knock the whole neighborhood, but the street that's there, uh, I think that's one where you got to make it a point to at least those couple of houses. So at the open house, uh, it's pretty simple. You just come in, uh, you greet everyone that's in there. Um, Hello, my name is Bill. Nice to meet you. The seller requires everyone to sign in and, and then go ahead and take a look at the home and I'll be right here for any questions you may have. Uh, it's quick and simple. Uh, when you tell them that the seller requires everyone to sign in, they're going to tend to sign in without too much hassle. Um, so that, that shouldn't be a problem. And um, you should try to get everyone's signatures if possible, because that's how you're going to reach out to them in the future. Um, and I like to first get them in at the open house, greet them, and then have them look at the house. And then when they come back, that's when I have a longer conversation. Uh, I think they take that better versus coming in and then you have all these questions for them. They get overwhelmed, so it's better for them to come back to you with questions after they've seen the house. Uh, from what I've seen, that's the, the best way to go about it. Uh, and because you did all this preparation, like in the previous slides, there was all these six things that we did. You're going to have the answers to all the questions that they're going to be asking. It's pretty much going to be questions about the property, the neighborhood, and you did all your research. So now you're going to be able to answer all those. So that's not going to be a problem. Um, yeah, there's n not too many questions that are not related to the property or the neighborhood. So yeah, you're going to be good. And one thing I do during the open house as well is I take good notes for the listing agent, the number of parties, if they were interested or not, do they have an agent and general feedback, uh, would they offer on the house. All that is good to have uh, to hand over to the listing agent at the end of the um, open house because then they're going to see that, okay, he got all this good information. He basically did my job for me. I'll have him host the next weekend's open house or future listings that I have. Um, that's very important for you to keep on getting open houses in the future. And yeah, pretty much just being prepared. So that's why there's not too much going on here. Uh, any questions? You're doing very well explaining the questions. <laughs> yeah, so one, here's a couple ways I try to guarantee that my open houses are a success. So whenever you have buyers come in, for example, you kind of have the opportunity to have like a mini buyer consultation, especially if there's not uh, too many uh, people coming in um, and you have the opportunity to offer them solutions, especially if they're uh, not satisfied with their buyer's agents, for example. Uh, next, uh, you got to be the neighborhood expert. Uh, you got to show them that uh, you know the neighborhood, also what the home is going to sell for. And you're going to be able to do this with all the preparation we did in uh, beforehand. Um, and when you when they know that you're the neighborhood expert, they're going to come to you because they want to buy in this general area because they're looking at homes around this area. And then next, uh, I think this is one of the most important ones as well. Uh, so if you have a better lender than the agent they're working with uh, for agents that for buyers that have agents, um, you're going to win them over. You could talk about special loans, down payment assistance, and seller credits. 
Uh, I've had so many times where I uh, talked to an agent, uh, to a buyer, and they had an agent. They also had a lender, but their lender only qualified them for like 500. But then I know this other lender that offers them down payment assistance. Uh, so then they could qualify a lot for a lot more. Usually buyers want to qualify for a lot more. And there's, in the areas that I focus in, they like to hear about down payment assistance. And if I know a lot about that, uh, they're going to want to work with me. Uh, there's other situations, for example, uh, with item buyers, there's uh, self-help credit union. They have been doing 10% down payment for a while now before other uh, lenders. And most lenders, they used to require you to bring in 20% down payment. But there's been times when I brought in um, uh, self-help to talk to the, uh, to the attendees. And we made, I made the connection and I let them know that you could do 10% down payment, 5% down payment, and there's no PMI. Um, and they see that I made that connection, so they're gonna work with they're gonna uh, they're gonna work with me because I brought them something better, better than what they had. So then they're gonna stick with me. Uh, and there's all types of uh, lenders and loans. Blanca and Grace are really great as well. Bank of America, First Republic Bank used to do um, uh, for 20% down payment. They used to give you a 3.75% interest rate back in 2022, when everyone else was doing six. 7%, uh, and that was really helpful because not everyone knew about that. So that's how I was able to win over a couple of clients. Um, yeah, so there's all types of uh, lenders for all types of situations. So that's why you gotta be good at asking questions of, this, of the buyers, especially if they're having trouble with lenders. Uh, yeah, that's one of the uh, best ways to uh, get buyers to work with you when you give them a better lender. That's really important. Um, and also at busy open houses, you got to be courteous. You got to let them know that, hey, there's a lot of people coming in, but I want to make sure that I can answer all your questions. Uh, do you mind if I reach out to you later in the day today or in two, three days? And that way they're going to be more receptive to you uh, when you give them their phone call. Um, yeah, just being courteous, being nice and uh, attending to everyone. Yeah, because you never know. So, um, I've had an example where earlier in February, I had a buyer come in, I greeted them properly, uh, but I never really talked to them. I just said, can I reach out to you later? And now we're closing uh, on Thursday or Friday, today, uh, tomorrow or Friday. Um, yeah, so I didn't really have a conversation with them at the open house, but I made it a point to reach out to them uh, through phone call. Yeah, I was busy talking to other buyers in, at that open house. Yeah, but I made sure to talk to everyone. That's important too. Um, and if you're starting out or like, it doesn't matter if you just, you did a open houses as well, you could partner with another agent, especially if the um, uh, open house is really busy. It's good to have somebody talk to everyone that comes in. Um, and that way you can see them, uh, the way they talk to buyers, or sellers. Uh, you're, it, it's good to have to have a, um, see it in person, see it in action. Any questions? So with open houses, it's good to stay positive. Uh, for example, there's gonna be a lot of slow open houses where it's only three to five um, attendees coming in. Uh, but I take that to, um, as an opportunity because at a slow open house, if only one person is coming in for an hour, um, you could pretty much have like a mini buyer consultation there because um, you have like 20, 30 minutes where you could just talk to them, get to know their situation. So I've had times where I've had like one or two buyer consultations just because there's only two or three people coming in. Um, yeah, I take it as an opportunity. And for example, let's say next, um, let's say if you do two open houses for 30 weeks and at each open house uh, you get two leads. I think that's doable. I, I've seen open houses where you get like you collect six, seven, eight uh, contacts. Um, so I think this number is pretty like middle of the road. It's not too above and beyond or it's not very little. So let's say you get 120 leads and you convert them at a 5%. I'm just making up these numbers for now, but I think they kind of make sense because the conversion ratio, I think it could be higher for open houses because um, you get better leads uh, coming into open houses, they're looking to buy. 
versus cold calling or ads. So I think this is pretty reasonable, I would say. Uh, I think at this the, is for the year? Yeah, for the year, yeah. So at one of the masterminds, I think in Salt Lake City, they were talking about how uh, conversion rates, like three to five is pretty standard for most uh, lead sources. Um, so you get like six closings, for all, closings from open houses. So the more you do it, the more consistent you stay at it. Just say if you get at least six closings in your average position, or, or GCI, yeah. it would be about 15,000. So that's already 90,000 a year just in open houses. Exactly. GCI. Yeah, and... Uh, it's 90,000 in GCI, just in... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 5%, I think that's pretty middle of the road. I, uh, I, I, I could see it go higher because... People coming into open houses, they're looking for homes. They're, I, I see that they're a little bit farther along the timeline. So that's why I see, I see you having more success than these like, pretty middle of the road numbers. Um, yeah, as an example. Um, and during those slow open houses, when there's a lot of downtime, I take it as an opportunity to, um, uh, to make my phone calls. Uh, there's been times where only two, three people showed up but I was uh, having good conversations or just picking up the phone, um, m making my follow-up calls with other leads. Um, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I don't, yeah, if, if it's a slow open house, it's, it is what it is, but you'll just gotta, you just gotta stay positive. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. So the, even if two, three people leads come in, uh, you're gonna be able to convert them better the more you've done it. And that's happened a lot for me where I've uh, had open houses and it's only one, two, three people coming in, but I had a really good conversation. Um, so that got me to have them, uh, to get them to close. Uh, so your goal at the open houses is collecting leads, collecting contact information, uh, setting buyer consultations, showings, uh, connecting uh, buyers with lenders, uh, I've even had an example of Daisy, how she said that um, there was a buyer that came into the open house and she, they had their uh, uh, taxes, documents, everything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you scanned it for them and you sent it to the lender and had them pre-approve, I think the same day. Yeah. Um, yeah, just basically that's an example of being quick on your feet, uh, being like, hey, do you, uh, if you have all these documents, we could send it to the lender. Um, and I uh, would have you pre-approved, stuff like that. And that applies to not just open houses, like connections you make um, anywhere. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, if you facilitate it for them, um, you're quick on your feet. Uh, that's how you get to uh, close on buyers that you're just, you're just barely meeting. Um, and one thing to look out for is uh, buyers uh, without agents showing up at the open house. You have an opportunity to show them what you do um, and, and um, you're auditioning. And also if they're unhappy with their buyer's agent, if they're there with their buyer's agent, it's uh, maybe the buyer's agent is busy, but it's likely that they just don't wanna go there because there's an open house. So that's your opportunity. Um, especially if you give them value, then uh, you got them. And also, like I said uh, before, uh, when you're at the open house, you're showing the sellers how you're selling a home uh, when you're hosting the open house, when you're putting up signs, door knocking, um, that should be your goal as well. Next. So after the open house, um, you got to make sure you give the listing agent uh, all, this, uh, all the notes that you took. Um, so then they, uh, they'll come back to you to give you more open houses. And you also got to make sure you add your leads to the CRM, Lofty. Um, take good notes, make sure to follow up with them according to whatever information you got from them, or maybe you're just gonna uh, set appoint appointments with them, uh, et cetera. And then also, uh, so like I said before, make sure to set, uh, set aside some time after the open house so that you could go and show uh, uh, the other listings in the neighborhood to these buyers uh, because I've seen that buyers, well, you're hosting on Saturday and Sunday. That's when uh, pretty much nobody is working, so they have time. And I've had it happen a lot of times where uh, I told them, uh, we could see these homes after I finish. Would you like to meet me here at this listing? 
um, at 4.30, and they said yes, uh, because they have time. So that's, that's another uh, opportunity where you could be quick on your feet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, so she was saying, uh, do, you, do I pull up the listing information, send it, text it to them? What I do is uh, I have my computer, uh, and I just pull up Zillow, and I show them, hey, this is this house, this house, this house. Which ones do you want to see um, today? Because I think these, these ones fit your criteria. And yeah, I just basically pull out my computer and look, look through them with them. And then we set a time, and... Yeah, it doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, and then you already have their information when they sign in. But if they didn't sign in, um, they're definitely going to want to give you their contacts if you let them know that we could see these homes um, after I finish my open house. So that's another way to, uh, if they didn't sign in, you get them later on down the line. So uh, what I like to do in terms of calling the leads, I like to wait like a day or two. Uh, that day of, uh, they probably already heard you, but it's good to like, wait a day or two, not too long as well. And I ask for more feedback, uh, see what they have to say. They might have more uh, thoughts on the property after letting it marinate in their mind for a little bit. And that's when I also take the opportunity to set appointments with them for the people that I haven't already set appointments. Um, uh, and that could also mean connecting them with lenders. Uh, but as always, in person is always better. Uh, and that's what I do a couple of days after. How do you set the appointment? Uh, it, it depends. It depends where they're at. But uh, for example, like I said, I like to do open houses in Oakland. I ask them to meet at the Oakland office or any... But how do you, what's your flow on how to get them to meet it's you? Script. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so I say, hey, nice to meet you at the open house. I wanted to make sure to reach out to you, see if you have any more interest. Uh, do you have any more feedback for us? And then that's how it starts. Uh, and then I do my regular uh, buyer consult over the phone, getting more uh, details on them, like where they're buying, uh, how much they want to pay, uh, stuff like that, the regular uh, phone consultation stuff. Um, and from there, I like to see if they are, uh, uh, what, what I like to do when I talk to them on the phone is see if there's any red flags as to that would impede them from getting um, a pre-approval. So like if they have like huge amounts of debt or stuff like that, like really bad credit. Um, if so, then I kind of just like, okay, then I'll just continue to follow up with, the, follow up with you. I may, uh, it'll, it'll be a good idea for you to work on your credit, paying off this debt, et cetera, just small basic details. But if they look like everything checks off, they make good money, good income, um, and um, they have like, uh, good credit. Uh, if if majority of those are checked off, then I try to set the appointment, and that could be, uh, and that's usually with the lender, or I let them know that we could scan your documents and send it over to the lender, and uh, that could be at the Oakland office, Hercules office, or somewhere nearby, convenient to them. Um, if it's convenient for them, they're going to show up. Uh, yeah, so that's why I make it a point to say like this Starbucks is nearby where you live, etc. Stuff like that. So these are some common questions. Uh, for example, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, do you have other listings in the area? That's pretty much an invitation for, from them for you to say, hey, we have these other listings to, um, that we could go see today or in the next couple of days. Um, I hear this so many times. I used to uh, actually want to answer with, actually, no, I don't have listings. But no, that's not. That's not the right way to go about it. Uh, the, the better way is saying, hey, I have these other listings that we could go see. Uh, when do you have time? Um, yeah, so you'll hear that a lot. And also, how much do we need for the down payment? I hear that a lot, uh, especially for homes in the five, six, seven hundred uh, price range. And I think a good way to answer that is giving them options. Um, I like to say it doesn't have to, you don't have to have 100,000, 200,000 to buy a home. I have examples of buyers um, 
closing on their home with only 20,000, 30,000. Um, yeah, they're more receptive to that. It's kind of like how you word it. Uh, that'll catch them. So if you know how to word it, then uh, they'll be more receptive. Uh, that's why it's important to kind of practice what you say with this one. Um, there's also gonna be agent, uh, buyers working with their agent and that's where you ask good questions, see if there's some way where they're unhappy with their agent. So then you could offer them a solution. Maybe their agent, I've had it where the agent is out of the area, doesn't know the area, but you're the area expert, so then you have them. Or maybe the agent doesn't know the lender, uh, doesn't have uh, the lenders that you have, then you can make that connection, then you got them. Um, yeah. Uh, so you gotta ask good questions uh, so that you can find that area where you can come in. Um, and also, we're neighbors and we're just looking. Uh, that's something that you hear a lot. And you could say, well, are you curious about how much your home could sell for? And you could see that uh, all the work we've done to sell this home. Um, so we hope that in the future, you can reach out to us. Um, yeah, so that's one thing you could say. You could say, how uh, are you interested in uh, how much your home could sell for. Um, maybe, they, maybe those neighbors also know some neighbors that are wanting to move outside the area. Um, maybe they want to move closer to their neighborhood. Maybe the schools are not so good. And, that, and from them, you could get some really good information on the neighborhood if you don't know the neighborhood. You could ask them about uh, what are the schools, like where are the best schools, so that when other attendees come in, you can mention, hey, I know that this school is really good. It, but you just got it like two minutes ago. So yeah, from neighbors, it doesn't, uh, yeah, if you have good conversations with them, you could become um, more knowledgeable on the neighborhood. Uh, so that's why it's important to talk to them as well, even though they're just looking. Can you go back to the deal or listing scenario? Is that something where you're using just the agent to print it out? Or do you have to um, well, I have my computer. I just pull it up and then I show them we can look at this, this. Uh, and these uh, homes are going to sell for this general area because I already did my CMA and looked at the listings. So I know what they're going to sell for because at, at face value, they're just going to see the Zillow uh, listing price or Redfin listing price. They're not going to see that this home is actually going to sell for 100 or 50,000 over what it's listed for. So yeah, I just have my computer in front of me. Uh, yeah, so at that open house, uh, uh, I had them sign in. I got the husband's uh, name, phone, and email. And uh, I didn't really have a conversation with them because I was busy talking with the other attendees. Um, uh, but I made sure to follow up and call them. And from February up until like the middle of March, they were not responsive uh, because I, they were working with another agent. Um, but as soon as I... They called me back once because I called them a couple times. So I was like, uh, I called them maybe three, four, five times in, in like a month. He called a lot. Uh, sometimes. Uh, um, so they called back and I picked up the phone and I met them at the Hayward office that same Saturday because I had some free time. Um, and that same day, we took a look at some homes and I connected them with the lender that worked better for them. They were originally pre-approved for, I think, 550 and they shot up until up to 610 um, and we're going to close on them uh, tomorrow or friday and they're really happy because they got a much lower monthly payment and it was a lot less out of pocket plus i also got seller credits from them so yeah um, that happened pretty quickly february to now uh, end of april uh, so that one was pretty good so open house uh, leads are farther uh, along in the timeline, generally. Uh, this one as well, it uh, most of the time, a lot of times they're gonna come in and they're pre-approved. They might not be happy with that pre-approval or with that agent, but they're, but they're farther along and they already have their documents, so it's gonna be easy for them to send it to another lender. Uh, yeah, so that's why open houses are really good. Uh, same thing with uh, this one. This one was at an open house for Daisy uh, on Johnson. Um, I Make met- you make money off me. <laughs> um, so at that open house, it was in Richmond. I met those buyers and I let them know about these loan programs. 
uh, that they, that they can, uh, can hire pre approval from. And I also let them know that we have options further out, like Vallejo, it doesn't have to be Richmond or Oakland. And uh, we could also get seller credits um, and get them their monthly payment that they were comfortable with. Uh, yeah, so they had a pre approval from another lender up to 600, but they, yeah, and then they got up to 650. Um, and we clo I closed on them on, in the middle of February. And December, January, we were looking at homes. Uh, so yeah, that's another example of how it's, um, uh, they're further along the timeline. And the better I've gotten at these open houses and what I say, the faster I'm able to catch them. And uh, uh, as an example, uh, in the years past, like when I was with Keller Williams, I was just starting out, so my scripts were not as good. So I did come across leads that I could have converted uh, as fast or as quickly as these two, for example, but I wasn't, I hadn't done all the preparation, all the practice, gotten all the feedback, so I wasn't able to make it happen back then, but I knew, now thinking back, now I knew I could have done this, this, this. So for the next time that I come across a situation like that, I can make it happen like these two people within like two or three months. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I see open houses as a really big opportunity, um, especially if I narrow down um, the neighborhood, uh, like my niche, uh, to where I could have these better conversations. Um, at this one in the middle, for example, it was an open house in the middle of 2021. It was in San Leandro, um, and the buyer let me know that they're just looking. They wanted to see what they could buy. Uh, they have a house in Oakland, and in 2022, I followed up with them a couple times in 2023. I also sent them some information. The screenshot that I had was just me saying, hey, I was letting you know that there's this loan program that you can use in your second home. They give you these, this for the down payment and the credits. And also the rates went down a little bit better, went down a, a little bit. So it's uh, monthly payment is better. And they said, thank you for the follow-up. Thank you for the information. And that was in November. Uh, and then I think it was last saturday they reached out to me again they asked hey are you still a realtor are you still working and i said yes uh, tell me a little bit about your situation i know that you were still um you wanted to sell this home in oakland so you could buy another one um so yesterday i sent them the cma and a net sheet um, and they're always they were really responsive because I, i've i've followed up with them um a bunch of times already uh, and that's an open house in uh, 2021, and they might sell maybe this year, maybe next year. But I already, uh, they're, they're already reaching out to me versus anybody else. They reached out to me. They sent me the text. Um, they called. They, they looked at the email. They said, okay, thank you. We'll take a look at it. And now it's just me continuing to follow up with them. Um, yeah. And I couldn't have done that. Uh, before joining the, uh, the Davis team because that's when I started to do more of the work, more of the effort, more of the screw practice. Um, so I made it happen. So. What about yeah. the one in Concord? You did an open house in Concord. They came in. They wanted that specific house. Yeah. Yeah, there was one for my... Uh, I was hosting an open house for uh, my Keller Williams mentor. And uh, she's... Last year especially, she's given me... She had given me a lot of open houses to host. Uh, because I always say yes, because uh, I because I know that like um, she gets a lot of listings in Oakland, so even if it's ones further out in Concord, Brentwood, I say yes because I want to get the ones when she's in Oakland. Um, so I was there, I was hosting the open house, um, and my scripts were getting a lot better, uh, and I was talking to the buyers, and they said they were interested in putting an offer. And then I connected them with Blanca, um, and then we submitted an offer on that Thursday. It got accepted. But uh, they wanted to cancel because really they wanted a new construction home. And then we made that happen after. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so there's um, open houses can be really lucky, especially if you work to make your luck happen by making by doing all this preparation um, and practicing your scripts. So, yeah, it's a numbers game. It's a practice makes perfect type of game. So. The more you do it, the better you get at it, uh, the faster you can close. Um, yeah.
you're just putting yourself in those situations to make closings happen faster. Yeah, so that's a couple examples. Um, yeah, do you guys have an open house this weekend? <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, any more questions?